The central issue for any nation's drug policy is this. What sort of society does its population want? Australia has a great deal of clarity around that question because we triennially survey our population. And it is clear from the almost univocal rejection of illicit drug use that Australians want less drug use and not more. 99% of Australians do not approve the use of heroin, ice and speed. It's on the table you can see on this slide. 98% do not approve the use of cocaine. 96% do not approve the use of ecstasy. And yet this series has demonstrated that decriminalisation increases drug use, as Portugal found, despite funding a policy of dissuasion against drug use. And when it comes to less drug use, every country knows what works. They are just unwilling to do what they know will work. And here is an official Australian graph of opiate-related deaths. Here it is again with some arrows added to it, indicating which direction our opiate mortality has been taking. Notice the green arrow signifying a 67% decrease in deaths between 1999 and 2007. Now, what caused these highly significant decreases? The prioritising of drug prevention is the answer. Up until 1998, harm reduction programs were prioritised by our government. Free needles for drug users, opiate replacement therapies, drug user organisations guiding national drug policy. And then Tough on Drugs intervened between 1998 and 2007. That's where the green arrow is going downward. With the attendant significantly decreased mortality. In 2007, a new federal government scrapped Tough on Drugs and reprioritised harm reduction over prevention. The result? Drug deaths per capita more than doubling. That's not harm reduction, but prevention works. And it is not just opiate deaths that were affected. Prevention reduced deaths from all drugs, as you can see across here on this graph, just as harm reduction increased deaths from every drug. So prevention does indeed work. Australia's overall drug use burden under a prioritised prevention regime almost halved drug use. Now, the Iceland government, at the same time as Australia, prioritised prevention in its community with a resilience-based community engagement model, which dramatically decreased all drug use. The Swedes had already shown the way, where they prioritised prevention, along with free drug rehabilitation in 1980. And note the significant drop in school-aged drug use until 1992, when the country stopped spending on rehab due to a recession, only to see a reversal of the gains they had made. That spending resumed in 2001. Prevention really works. So we know what works. Politicians have always been shown what works, but almost all of them lack the political will to do what their countrymen want.